David Romhilt is an expert. He conducts the, all kinds of due diligence in his role of choosing fund managers for clients at Barclays Wealth Management. Good to have you with us. Thank, Thank you very you. much for coming in, David. Explain a little bit for those that don't understand exactly what it is you do at, at Barclays because you yourself don't necessarily make the decision, this stock, that stock, right. this ETF, that ETF. Um, you go out and find the experts, right? Yeah, our job is really to build the investment platform for our clients. And so we go out and select the managers who will oversee the investments that our asset allocation group is deciding. So we have a research process to, to do that. But yes, we're hiring investment managers to advise on the stocks and bonds and other other asset classes. Now, do the investment managers also, they come to you to try to get on this platform because once maybe approved or at least on your radar screen, they've got a much better chance of getting new clients, getting more assets under management. Sure. There's a lot of outgoing and incoming calls. We, uh, we get calls from money managers all the time. Uh, one of our sourcing techniques is not only uh, to um, search the databases, but also uh, putting out information about our platform so that managers seek us out as well if they have something that's in common with the way we think. What are, the, what are the ways that managers are thinking right now? Because do they get divided up into various camps so that people will be able to pick and choose whether they want something that's very risky or in a specific type of asset class? How does that all get sliced and diced? Yeah, it's, it's important. I mean, one of the critical lessons of last year was to understand what the actual risk was of the underlying investments. And hopefully the good news was that um, if you did lose money or, or lost more money than the market, you knew that you were in a risky investment to begin with. Uh, so we do. We, we attack uh, each of those parameters in a client's portfolio and try to understand which of our investments we would use in a, in a rising market and which of our investments we'd try to use to protect some capital in a, in a down market. Okay, so that's kind of like the strategic issue related to asset allocation. Yes. But you've also got to do the nitty-gritty work yes. of figuring out, okay, is this manager yes. legit? Is the technique legit? Um, do they have the right kind of risk management tools already in place? I mean, you've got to kind of get internal right. into the hedge fund, right? Absolutely, uh, and it's across asset classes. But, you know, we really break it up into three categories. We focus on a firm's organization, try to understand the culture, quality of the people, size of the firm, all the things that we think could impact the performance. We then look at the investment process, um, really walk through with them how they extract uh, ideas into the, and get them into the portfolio, what their edge is. We're trying to understand, you know, what advantage a manager may have over the market. And then we look at the quantitative aspects of the firm, you know, what have they produced in terms of performance uh, and whether we think that they're going to be able to replicate it. And then finally, uh, and this has been in focus more recently, you know, what are the operational and risk kind of categories of the firm, understanding the auditor, understanding, you know, what their trading systems are, understanding those people, background checks, those sorts of things. When you talk about the operational uh, aspects of, of, of the various funds or the various investment managers, you also look at whether they're owned by the employees yes. at those various funds. Why yes. is that? We, we like boutique cultures because we think the best chance for someone to replicate their performance is to be looking at the same people across the table. And we want the incentives of our managers to be aligned with our clients. So we have a philosophy that majority employee owned firms are the right way to invest. Um, it's a generalization. I would say 80% of the firms we work with fall into that category. But we think it's, it's more uh, conducive for consistency. Uh, and that's really what we're looking for. We're trying to replicate something that's happened in the past. The best way to do that is to have the same factors in place going forward. What about the issue having to do with active and passive uh, strategies right yeah. now? I mean, is this a debate that is still going on? Or has it come down anywhere on either side? I mean, yeah. especially after the last, let's say, 18 or 24 months. I, you know, I hope it's still going on. Uh, you know, active versus passive, I think, will continue. Um, we don't really qualify indexing as passive. I actually think indexing is a very active strategy. It just happens to be one that uh, someone um, called passive management. But really, it's a strategy. It's a quantitative strategy. It's deciding that you're going to you know, overweight the companies that are the largest uh, within the index. They're typically market capitalization weighted. Um, and that's a determinant that that's how one should manage a portfolio. We think that you should manage a portfolio differently than that generally. Um, and so it, it's an ongoing healthy debate. I think last year, um, you know, with the breadth of the bar market being so negative, there actually wasn't a tremendous amount of difference in, in both standards. It was one of those years where it was a little bit of a wash, which was surprising because typically in down markets, you do expect active management to, uh, to provide some preservation of capital. Has uh, the emergence of so many ETFs uh, changed the business uh, materially, let's say, in the last uh, two to five years? A absolutely. Um, ETFs are continuing to change the landscape. I mean, you can look at the asset growth numbers where ETFs continue to be uh, the, one of the largest, a largest asset gainers over time. Um, 
ETFs now, you can replicate a number of investment ideas in your portfolio that were extremely difficult to replicate. I mean, only the most sophisticated investors could do some of the things. So a wider, a, perhaps a wider menu that's available for, for yeah, the investors. We, we uh, actually today are managing portfolios entirely with ETFs. I want to thank you very much, David okay. Romhilt of uh, Barclays Wealth Management. Well, to have you back at a future date.